By Jove, I'm going to try that. I'll march angrily up to his door. Good. I'll knock on it very angrily. Good. And then when he opens the door... You'll start talking polite again. <laughs> How did you guess? <laughs> okay, so here's what you do. You just write a real tough note and stick it on his windshield wiper. Oh, good idea. Something really strong, like, uh, Dear sir, I wonder if you'd be kind enough to please refrain from... <laughs> If this is the way you guys talk at the United Nations, no wonder the world's in a mess. Come here. <laughs> See, Bentley, first you got to get his attention, right? So I'm going to give you this, and I want you to put this on his windshield wiper. And I guarantee you all your troubles will be over. <laughs> well, thank you. Here. Dear Turkey, <laughs> stop busting my car door. I'm going to jump on your hood and go upside your head. <laughs> Isn't that a little strong, coming from Mr. Bentley? He's got to be strong, Weezy. Well, you're right, but... No buts, Bentley. It's about time you stop letting people push you around. <laughs> Three days. I could live out of these bags for four months. And six pair of undershorts. That's sinful. <laughs> Florence. Hello. Yes, this is he. Who? Oh, hi, Bentley. Hey. What? Did you do it? Huh? Damn right. I want to hear all about it. I'll be right there. <laughs> hey, Weezy, Bentley did it. He wants to meet him down at Charlie's bar. Uh, but, George, we've got a plane to catch. Relax, Weezy. The plane don't leave till 5 o'clock. we still got three hours. Oh, Miss Jefferson, I can't wait for y'all to get back. I know, Florence, you'll be lonely. Oh, it ain't that. I figure that if Tony Bennett could leave his heart in San Francisco, maybe Mr. Jefferson could leave his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bentley. I see my note worked for you, huh? It certainly did. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Boy, that is some shiner. You're gonna have to do something about that quick. Oh, I am. I'm drinking just as quick as I can. <laughs> Two more doubles, please. What happened? I gave him your note. He gave me this eye. And then what did you do? Well, I said, ouch. <laughs> and then I tried to reason with him. Reason? You mean you didn't hit him back? Mr. J, I couldn't. I don't believe in violence. That ain't violence. That's revenge. <laughs> so I tried reasoning with him. He made two suggestions. A, he told me what I could do with my car, which is impossible. <laughs> and B, he told me I should park on the street, which I did. Mm. Bentley, you know you're hopeless. You'll never be nothing but a nice guy. Mr. J, please don't go. There's something I ought to explain to you. Do you notice anything about these hands? Yeah, they're white. <laughs> They're dangerous weapons. Once, when I was a lad in school, my friend Monty made me so furious I couldn't restrain my anger. I drew back my fist, lashed out, and Monty lost three teeth. You mean you hit him in the mouth? No, I never hit anyone in my life. Then how did he lose three teeth? I swung, Monty ducked, and he banged his mouth on the desk. <laughs> At that moment, I vowed never to raise my hand in anger again. Why? You didn't hit nobody. But if it hadn't been for me, Monty wouldn't have lost his teeth. Can't you see my position? Yeah, I see, Bentley. You're a coward. <laughs> Mr. J, that's an ugly thing to say. Well, it's the truth. I didn't say it wasn't the truth, just that it was ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. J, you've opened my eyes for me. All these years, I've been nothing but an abject coward. Right on, Bentley. I mean, there's a time for negotiation, yes, but there is also a time for action. And now's the time for action, right? Right. Mr. J, you're looking at a new Harry Bentley. Attaboy, Bentley. From now on, nobody pushes you around, right? You're damn right they won't. I mean, a man's car is his castle. Anyone touches me or my castle had better beware. Hey, you, don't you know better than to park in front of a hydrant? Oh. <laughs> there, is that what you meant? Not a cop, Bentley, not a cop. 